Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about two different libraries that are actually very similar. And these are both from Sato Kinetic and these are Ostinato Strings and Ostinato Brass. And uh, both of these libraries serve a very specific function. And that is basically to provide you with uh, rhythmic phrases that will help you play simple chords up to complex chords. So this is not the library for uh, single note voice leading ostinatos like um, -da 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 and like knock that kind of thing. It's basically for chords and you, you know they have all these different rhythmic patterns that help you execute these chords in a very natural way. So instead of having to press like a staccato patch for every single uh, chord that you're trying to repeat, you can just select one of these rhythms and the library does the work for you. And so uh, the orchestration, you can see right here what's happening um, and how the chord is laid out, the voicing. Uh, so let me just play it a little bit and show you what I mean. So very full and rich sound, right? And these are just the different voicings I'm going across. So you, from C4, uh, sorry, these five uh, black keys here, these are the ones that I press to change the type of voicing that the chord has right now. So right now I was on one. Let's go to two. Let's go to three, four, and finally five. This one is a little strange, right? So it adds a, little, a few more note, different notes there that you can use. Um, and then in this uh, blue range right here, that's the range where you play all of your uh, different chords there. So you can play many different types of chords. You have augmented chords, you know? So we go back to voicing one. Let's do minor. You can do uh, dominant seventh. You can do diminished seventh, right? And then you could also do uh, let's see, major seventh. You could do minor seventh. You could do minor major. Right? So the system is very intelligent and can recognize all these different chords that you're playing. Um, I think one of the really cool features though is that this green section here, which is the harmonic shift, that's where this library stands out. So let's say you're in a little bit of a creative impasse. Um, what you can do is all these green keys here, all you need to do is basically select a key to select your home key, or sorry, select a chord I meant. So let's say I wanted to do C major. Okay, so I click C, and now what happens is, so let's click absolute first. And this is for the harmonic shift, that's what HS is for. Um, now basically, when I play any of these green notes, these will activate chords related to C major. So because I already selected a C chord in the blue range, now when I click the C in this green range right there, that's selected red, it will now activate the C major chord. If I press the D, it'll play a D minor chord. And then let's do an E, which would be an E minor chord. Right, F would be F major, G7, A minor, B e diminished, and back to C. Uh, let's do a different chord here. Let's say I selected A major, okay? Now, anytime I press an A, made, uh, press the A in the green area, that'll activate A major, and then these other notes, will uh, fall into place for the notes of A major. So if I'm pressing E, for example, I'll have an E7 because now A has become the tonic, if that makes sense. Uh, for what, let's do one more example. Let's say we want a D major. So now if I press D, that'll be D major. If I press uh, E, that'll be E minor because that's basically the, you know, EGBR in the key of D major, right? But if I press C, however, you guys something completely different because uh, you don't really have C natural in the key of D major, you know? But if I press C sharp, then there's your, you know, half diminished chord there. So it's really uh, useful. And then if I wanted to do relative, the way it works is that my C note will now be the tonic of any key or any chord that I press in the blue range here. So let's say I pressed F sharp major. Now my C will be F sharp major. And then my uh, D will be A flat minor or G sharp minor, and then B flat minor and so on. Right? So, I mean, you can play lots of different combinations here. Uh, 
Um, now, let's go into base invert, which is pretty cool. Base invert basically allows you to play uh, based on your bottom note of the of what you're playing in the blues section here. So it'll actually follow exactly the voice leading that you're doing. So for example, let's say I wanted to do first inversion. I can do that right here. So basically the system is, is voicing it exactly how I'm playing it. If I turn bass invert off, then everything's going to be in root position. Even if I play it in inversion, it still plays it with E on the bottom instead of G sharp, as you can see I'm doing there now. So I tend to leave it on just because um, it gives me complete creative freedom and I don't have to go back and switch it to a, you know, a different inversion. Uh, these different green keys at the very bottom basically activate what position you want things to be in or the chords to be in. So for example, if I'm selecting this key right there, then I'll get, I should get second, second inversion. Uh, let's see. There's D major, and now if I wanted to do third inversion, let's say, let's do a D7. So I should do that note there. There we go. Third inversion there. So only use third inversion when you're actually playing a dominant seventh chord. Okay. And there's there's other features here that I, I haven't talked about yet, but um, there's the voicings. There's the different phrase ranges. Here you can. Uh, differentiate between the speed of the phrase you want. So based on velocity, that'll activate the uh, speed of the phrase. So this is two times. And then let's press it really lightly and I'll go back to half the time. So you'll hear the artifacts there. So just make sure you know exactly what you're doing. I tend to keep it on the one. So just sounds the most natural because that's how it was recorded. Right? So the overall sound is very nice. And if you wanted to tweak the mic positions, you can do that here, totally. So it's like an EQ. You just drag down the amount of lows you want or highs, um, and it's pretty easy. And then you can affect the tuning. But I think the standout feature for this library is essentially uh, the ability for you to get a rhythmic bed out of the gates without doing too much tweaking whatsoever, because it's pretty easy to use. All you need to do is know the pattern you want and the chord that you want, and then play accordingly. And if you don't like the voicing it comes with, then you can just uh, use these key switches up here um, to do that for you. And then also not a brass is a very similar concept. It's pretty much identical. You only have a couple uh, rhythmic differences here. So they took out, uh, you know, four sixteenth notes in the brass. They instead they use, uh, let's see, <laughs> double dotted whole notes and dotted half notes. And I really like this because it, you actually get a really nice swell with it. So that really nice brassiness there. Let's play it with the inversion. Right, so there's just so much stuff you can do on the fly. I mean, it really comes to life when you're playing it in in real time, and you can really just experience the different, uh, you know, different functions that it comes with. So, yeah, I mean, let's just let's just go through a couple of these rhythmic patterns. I'm not sure if I talked about this arrow yet or not, but basically, when it's on like this, these uh, the upper and the lower selections will travel together. So you can see right now they're linked together. And that's really useful when you want all the parts playing the same rhythm, right? However, if you don't, then you can just click the arrow, it'll break apart, it'll uncheck, then you can control them separately. So let's say I wanted a long, low phrase, but I wanted a quicker, high phrase. Then you hear this. Now let's speed up the low phrase. And slow the high one. And using these three functions here, you can activate and deactivate which phrase you want. So 
again, this bottom one here is the lowest one, and these are the two higher phrases. So if you solo them, you just hear the mid and the high. Right? If I take out the high one, you just get that middle note there. If I take that out and just put the bottom one. So it's totally customizable, which I really, really like. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So it's a very simple library to use in general. Um, the sound is is classic. You, I mean, you can't really fault the sound that they recorded. It's really nice, and it'll fit into your mix really, really nicely, in my opinion. Uh, the overall functionality is quite simple. There's just a lot of features that you can do to tweak around with the sound and you know how the actual phrases play together in terms of rhythm and all that so this definitely takes a bit of experimentation to get used to and i definitely recommend you give this a look if you're looking for a tool to help you get those rhythmic ostinatos going without having to play it in all the time by yourself again it's not the library for you if you're looking for you know those string lines that do tons of runs and stuff uh orchestral string runs by orchestral tools is the perfect library for that but uh but for rhythmic stuff that has repeated notes, I would definitely check this out. So thank you so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Let me just play a little bit with both of these libraries activated. Let's see how this sounds a little bit. Let's actually put the um, put that together. Let's move that down. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've actually already used it on the track, so I would definitely you know check this out and let me know what you think. If you decide to do purchase it, give me uh, give me a comment down below and let me know why and what you think of it. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.